we're here for the first time on you do what for a living but it's what we do for a living because we're talking about orange window cleaning today our story mine and sergio's my co-founder we got men over here on the the ones and twos recording got this whole setup put it together in like two weeks yo yo testing how's that sound everybody it sounds great in my ears i hope it sounds great in your ears let us know in a comment in y- on YouTube when we post <laughs> it. It's going to be in video as well as on every platform that you can listen to for your podcast. All right, so let's get started with the story. Take it back to inception. Uh, me and Johnny sitting on a beach, skipping class in school, 19 years old. Johnny starts, we start talking about what do we want to do for a living. I'm in school, civil engineering. What would you just find out? I had just found out that you didn't need a degree to start a business. Yep. I thought you needed a freaking bachelor's degree to start a business. Yeah, and I didn't know anybody that had their own business, so this is completely new to me, and you suggest that we should start a business, right? Yeah, well, we both. Both of us grew up pretty broke. So yeah, we broke boys. Yeah, we, <laughs> we didn't know any entrepreneurs. Like r- Owning a business was such a foreign concept. It was just out of the realm of possibility growing up. No one ever talked about it to either of us. Mm-hmm. At at the time, what do you guys do to make money? Uh, so Sergio, <laughs> he couldn't get a job. Mm-mm. Not even at McDonald's. McDonald's like, didn't want me. Wow. Actually, actually, Arby's didn't want me. Subway didn't want me. I don't know. Is my am I ugly? Where you applied to Arby's is a blessing. You did Arby's. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't get uh, a job there. <laughs> yeah, I could have hooked you guys up with those roast beef sandwiches though. Those I've are never had not have not Arby's, and I yeah. don't think I want to have it. No, you should actually try it. But I was a lifeguard. At the time, along with men, that's how me and men met, actually, on a side note. But I was a lifeguard, and then as we uh, were getting into starting the business, I I worked at an Italian ice uh, an Italian mm-hmm. ice franchise called Rita's. So then, then what happened? Well, that's when I got fed up because he was making money, even though it was at Rita's, um, still making more money than me, and I couldn't get a job, so... I said, screw it, let's start a business. And we started brainstorming what are some good business ideas and start making money. We didn't have that much money to start with. Um, but tell them what we spent money on first. Yeah. What was our first business idea? Clothing, a clothing line where we spent $300 on a logo. It was a streetwear brand. Who, streetwear who came brand. up with that idea first? Honestly, I, I don't, don't remember. I don't remember. I, okay. I remember I came up with the name Bent Co., the Bent Company. I don't know it's why. Like, because it's like this, that one word phrase, you know, like Supreme or V Loan. Okay. Like bent, you know, it's like that. Yeah. Really super straightforward. It was a concept, but we had no interest in clothing, and there was just so many people. It's it's a thing to do when you graduate high school, start a clothing brand. Right. So we didn't want to compete with everyone else that cares about clothing, so we went back to the drawing board. I. I had seen someone that was cleaning car windows in a parking lot. That kind of sparked the idea. Johnny looked it up, had realized that cleaning store windows and house windows was the industry. So A big one, too. Yeah. We took it to Amazon. Shout out to Jeff Bezos. <laughs> $150 total <laughs> and started the business door to door. So Yeah, and we were inspired by this video. This guy's name is Keith Kalfas. Mm-hmm. He's still big, pretty big in the industry, but... Basically, he posted a video on YouTube saying, I sold 75 accounts in 48 hours. My back was against the wall. I had eviction notices. My my wife and kids were going to go hungry. You know, being real dramatic about it. But right. it got us fired up. So fired up. Yeah, and so we, we bought that $150 worth of stuff, and we were both just gung-ho on selling storefront ac- window cleaning accounts. And we, we started off by going to this liquor store. And Keith Kalfas, that you, the same YouTube guy, right. told us to go in, uh, go into a s- any storefront, tell them you're going to clean their windows. Whether they say yes or no, just clean them anyways. And that's terrible advice. <laughs> but <laughs> we did it. We followed that advice. And uh, what he said would happen, happened. He said that they were going to feel bad and come out and give us money. And she felt really bad and, <laughs> and gave us five bucks. But then he also told us to give it back to the owner if they give us money. So then we gave it back to her. Uh, so we actually didn't make any money. Um, what do you guys do after that? We we went next door to the donut shop, and we asked them, 
hey, same thing, can we clean your windows? But we weren't going to do it for free this time. And they were like, yeah, I mean, if it's good, then we'll pay you if we like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we were like, okay. And and on a side note, don't ever do a job if someone says that to you. That's just, that's ridiculous. Yeah, that's not fair. Yeah, <laughs> and and we so we clean the windows, and they're like, well, it's it looks good, but we don't want to pay you, but we'll pay you in donuts. So they gave us a, a dozen donuts and some, yeah. like, cheese melts, uh, like, like ham and Swiss. Now that I think about it, they're like real cheap asses. Yeah, that, you <laughs> <know>? <laughs> they were. Like, really, a box of donuts. And it was in the afternoon, too, so you know they were fucking, like, old and nasty. How yeah. good were your windows, though? Honestly, I don't remember. I mean, I probably feel like we probably... <laughs> no, I feel like we probably did them good, because it's really... It's, it's two it's windows. Yeah, it's, two windows. it's not that complicated, but it probably took us, like, it half an hour. When nor Now, that same storefront would take us five minutes you know so wow yeah so that was like our first little like we were satisfied for the day mm -hmm. like that was enough selling yeah we took the donuts home yeah ate those bad boys and then we we're like all right we need to make some money now so next day day two we go out to this local area um it's called old town orange and it's much of historical like like think of your basic historic downtown area uh -huh. right yeah. You got the antique stores and, you know, little restaurants to eat at, stuff like that. Mom's and pop shops. E exactly. Mm -hmm. And so we go we go walking around pitching them, and we get our first account at this dry cleaner for, like, 12 bucks. Uh -huh. That takes us an hour and a half. That was the first account, 12 bucks. Walked a couple doors down, uh, found this mechanic. That was 40 bucks. That was, like, we were cloud nine, $40, bro. We couldn't believe it. And then went down the street again to uh, Omega oh, Burger. Yeah, the burger spot. Got that one for 50 bucks. 50? Monthly. Monthly, though. Wow. We're like, holy shit, 600 bucks for the year? We weren't even thinking like that at the time. <laughs> but got that one. Across the street from that one, there was the the big boy that we were like, dude, imagine if we got this one. It'd be like, it'd be like 150 bucks. <laughs> what was it? What store was it? Um, it's, like, it's like a car... A car place. Yeah. Like Ford, like classic Ford parts. I, I know what you're yeah. talking about. I've seen it. Yeah. yeah, it's this old guy that, that just leases it. Uh, this old rich guy. And he just, it's just for people to look at his cars. Nice. But we went in there and we ended up closing it for like 80 bucks. But it took us so long. And it was inside and out. And it was so much glass. 80 bucks. Um, but I yeah. mean, but that first week was a success. Because yeah. we got those accounts. How much money you guys think you guys made in total that week? That week? couple hundred bucks maybe like three three four hundred yeah. yeah. so you guys made back your 150 bucks oh yeah from dude, we're amazon we're instantly profitable <laughs> instantly. <laughs> yeah yep. that that's pretty satisfying saying you know for not any any business can be profitable within the first week yeah yeah but then the reality of business strikes the next week when we probably went over a hundred just couldn't get we anything could to save our lives like yeah literally it was terrible it was it was soul crushing we were we were changing the pitch every single store like because we we didn't know what works and didn't work you know so right it was just no after no after <laughs> no i remember my sales tactic was when someone said no i did not know how to object past like get past a no objection so i would literally ask them like are you sure <laughs> like, <laughs> you remember that I I was like, i'd be like are you sure what did are they say sure and they're like yeah I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah so, I mean, you definitely improved since yeah. then. Oh, definitely improved for sure. This freaking sales machine over here. Trial, trial and error for sure. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was terrible. Trial um, and error. I mean, YouTube, we learned everything from YouTube and podcasts. So, yeah, that was week two. And then that was kind of our summer, just doing storefronts, uh, cleaning windows, and it wasn't a it wasn't a full time thing because yeah, he was, was still at Rita's, and yeah, we just kind of did it. Do Rita's at night and window clean during the day, but we it was just like also we'd just drive around and we would hang out and if we saw like a complex that looked ripe, we would just like pull in and and then go like pitch all of them, like try to get a couple. Or mm -hmm. I remember one time we were walking in Old Town Orange again like months later with our friend, and they were doing new construction on or they're doing a, a build out in one of the restaurants, and I was like, bro, we could get this right now. Because his windows were messed up with paint everywhere. Yeah. That was when we were learning about construction cleanup. But <coughs> we went inside. I was like, hey, can we do this for 20 bucks? 
it took us like two hours, but we ended up closing it right there, just hanging out with our friend <laughs> nice. that night. So just, just that's kind of how you can get a you can get a picture of how we were operating back then, just like side side money, yeah. beer money. And then that first that first year, like summer, how much did we do? Maybe like five thousand at the most total. Yeah, like it was. I, I don't even think we hit five k to be honest. Yeah, that's realistic. But then fast forward to the, the next summer, got a little more serious about it. We ventured into doing residential homes, which was a big scary step at that time because. How do we get in? How do we get into residential homes? Well, like my what, mom, like my mom had told her friend that we do this. She's like, "Oh, I want my house cleaned." My house. But where was that job? Cleaned. In Hesperius, like an <laughs> hour, an hour away so, from here. So, for those unfamiliar with California, you've got Orange County, and then where we grew up, Hesperia. It's like no traffic, exactly an hour from where we're at, with traffic maybe an hour and a half, two hours. Okay. Like so, yeah. keep that in mind. And this is the summer of nineteen. No, eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. Yeah. So that house, I think we did for eighty or a hundred. Eighty, but we we quoted it at a hundred, and they're like, "Can you do 80? And then we're like, "Yeah, why not? Fuck it." Yeah. So eighty bucks takes us, I think, six hours. It's like five, yeah, hours. Like five hours I plus. It was like an all hour day. plus an hour drive there, an hour drive back. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and this was our first time seeing screens on windows. Keep Dude. in mind because we're doing storefront, so we were literally Took had to like fi- like figure out how to take minutes. the screen off. <laughs> And then we were like, how do we clean it? Sitting there on YouTube on our phones in front of their door, like, figuring out how to clean the damn screen. We took we, we took to out the garden hose, just started spraying the screen, <laughs> like, yeah, just figuring figuring it out as we go. So it took us forever. Windows probably look like shit. And I, sc- oh, I scratched the shit out of a window. Um, hope she's not listening to this because I don't think we ever told no, her. No, I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> but we had I, we had this long squeegee that we bought and it was backwards and it, and we didn't know it was the channel was backwards. Uh-huh. And when the channel's backwards, the metal covers basically the whole squeegee. Oh. So when you're squeegeeing window, you're just dragging metal <laughs> across the glass. <laughs> and that's what happened. Man. But yeah, we did that one. And we were like, dude, we need to get into residential. Like this was way underpriced, but we need to get into residential cuz there's money, especially in Orange County. There's tons of wealth here. So what we did was uh I, I, c- I cold called a couple maid services because I figured that they were uh, they would get called they would be asked if they clean windows but I knew they didn't clean windows because it's a pain in the ass right so they were like yeah like I, I can uh, refer you jobs just p- give us a kickback so we paid them like fifteen percent and that started getting the ball rolling like we were getting a good amount of jobs I remember mm-hmm. specifically like we didn't know um, I- it's not that crazy of an ask if you're saying hey I'll just give you a kickback for referring me it's literally it's so easy to get. But we thought it was the biggest deal. We dressed up in, like, dress clothes and everything and went and met at their office all dressed up while they were, like, just sitting there casually, a couple, like, 19-year-olds. And they're like, yeah, we'll refer you. And we we're on, Dude, we we're on cloud nine, bro. And then um, one of those maid services, so that was one, but the other one told us, hey, you guys need to get on Yelp and start getting reviews. And that was when we learned the value of a reputation. So yeah. at, at this point, you guys have – did not have a Yelp page even at all. No, no, we didn't ha- even. Do we even have a Google My Business? I feel like we did, but probably like five reviews. Or yeah, something. it was like our not friends. even. Yeah, not even. Like yeah, our our friends like would would give reviews, parents stuff like that. So prior to this, all you guys were doing to get jobs were through referrals. Uh, referrals, door to calling, door to door, um, flyers, flyers. Yeah, lots of flyers. We did use Nextdoor. Next yeah, next door got us our first initial uh, residential. Actually, that's awesome. Yeah, yep. back when you could uh, make solicitation posts, can't do that anymore. And then now, t- uh, now you guys get on, got on Yelp. Yeah, so now at every single job we go to, we are just trying our hardest to get reviews, just begging them for a review. Um, we get to maybe we get up to maybe. 20, 20, 30 reviews, and this guy from Yelp is calling Johnny all the time, telling him, hey, you got to start advertising on Yelp, but everyone talks shit about Yelp, so we're like, nah, we're not doing that. And we had already got bamboozled by freaking Angie's List. Angie's List, Yeah, that did not work for us. (laughs) Yeah, so we were just scared of advertising, but one day Johnny, I don't know, I guess he just sold Johnny, right? He just sold you? 
Like you, you caved you got in. Got my ass, yeah. You got his ass, but it was the best was thing that ever happened. It was, it was a girl, actually. So what it? What did you guys start at uh, for advertising? I think we started the basic like three hundred bucks a month. Okay. But yeah. That's. But it was weird because when we started to get get more reviews on Yelp, organically we were getting leads in and we were closing those leads. So Yelp was working. Mm-hmm. And so our my biggest thing was like, why am I going to turn on advertising if it's it's not working? And I and then I guess after I said that, we just stopped getting leads. And so I was like, oh, let's try advertising then. Yeah, and then that's when we were still in the field doing all the work, just me and him. And Yelp was connected to your phone, right? Like, your number was on Yelp. Mm -hmm. So his phone was just blowing up. He was like, he couldn't even clean windows because he was taking calls and messages all day. Yeah, hold on, can I put you on hold? Freaking respond, like, trying to get the first response in because uh, you have to be the, like, when Yelp messages or gives you a quote with sending it to, like, five other businesses. So I was trying to respond the fastest. Right. Answering phone calls. Uh, it would it would annoy me, so I'd leave the f- my phone in the c- truck sometimes. I remember specifically coming back to the the car one time, and there being like just ten leads sitting there for us. Wow, just, just ready to go. Yeah. So at that point, that's when we hire one of our friends, right? Yeah. So we're we're hiring some of our friends to help us out because we just have way too much work. And when when we started from nothing, we it was like impossible to say no to money. We had to say yes. So. We would say yes and then figure out a way to make it work. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and it didn't matter too if, like, for example, we would get calls for commercial, like big commercial buildings, and we like, we didn't have insurance or anything. But the property manager would be like, "Oh yeah, you guys are insured and everything, right? You guys are young." We're like, "Yeah, yeah, like don't worry about it." <laughs> and then, and then we did win one eventually, a big commercial job. And then I, that's when we got insurance for the first time because I called up his cox or something. I was like, "Hey, I need a policy," and they wrote up a policy real quick. And then, I sent, and then we sent it to them. So up until that point, you guys were doing residential j- jobs without any insurance, anything? Yeah, no, nothing, no insurance. Yeah, and no workers' comp on our employee. Yeah. Oh, oh <laughs> man, we're getting. I don't even think he's on payroll. We're like Venmoing him. <laughs> so that's yeah, you guys. That's how running a business is. Sometimes you got to get friends and family to help. So yeah, we were learning. Yeah, definitely learning. Yeah, but I mean. As we as you progress through the years, uh, and the more and more podcasts we listen to, and the more uh, books we read, it would just started to click more and more. The whole like building a business thing, right? I yeah. mean, but one thing it did teach me though is that you don't have to do everything perfect starting day one. Like ideally, you want to have some of those things in place. It makes your life easier and more organized, I guess. But not having it doesn't make it impossible either. So. Some people get that anxiety about they want it to be perfect before they start, but you don't need that. Yeah, you really don't. A, a lot of things are just overthinking. You know, oh my god, I gotta have the perfect website or the perfect truck wrap or setup before I get started. None of that matters. Just mm-hmm. go out and sell, make and money, then figure it out. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's definitely like an overarching theme of this so far. Is that you guys were learning how to clean a screen in front of a, a customer house. And then as you guys go learning the system and all that, that's the definitely that's how running a business is for sure. Yeah, dude, it's funny because uh, we when we had a th- we had a big team at, at one point, well, we still have a team, but when our team was at the biggest, uh, we didn't have we had just started doing Christmas lights, and it, everything was so hectic. We had no systems. It's because it's completely a new service, and you factor in inventory, so we had to figure out inventory management and buying product and uh-huh. and all that. And our technicians used to make fun of us because they would be like, hey, th- th- there's a problem here. And then me and Sergio would be like, don't worry about it. We'll figure it out. Like, we'll figure it out. You know, And th- that became a running joke amongst the technicians was like, yeah, they'll figure it out. Don't worry. They'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it, it's, tr- it's true. Hey, but you know what? We figured it out. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> That's the goal. Okay. So where are we at then? So somewhere 19. You guys started. I think we made about 30K. Like 25, I think. 25K. Yeah, 25K. Okay. And that was mostly in the summer, too. Uh, that, that was literally, yeah. like we did not operate. Um, during the school year. During the school year, yeah, we would just run the business on the break. So, like, when Christmas break came, we would get a couple weeks' worth of work in. And we would literally just use Yelp, like, turn Yelp on and off to um, get leads. When we need leads, we turn it on, get some jobs, and then turn it off. That's cool. So, it was still kind of just a sidetrack, or a side hustle for you guys at the time mm-hmm. yeah but 
summer 19 you guys got invited some something pretty cool a speech right yeah well that was before well we gotta we gotta talk about the internships because the whole time of building the business we were we would go back and forth on do we want to do this after college or like what do we want to do do we want to just start another business and take what we've learned and that was like our thought process he's a civil engineering major Sergio's a civil engineering major so obviously you don't go to school and do something hard like civil engineering and not want to experience what that's like, you know. Right. You don't just say, I'm going to be a window cleaner. I'm not going to try my degree. So he got an internship. That made me want to get an internship. And keep in mind, summer 2019. So I uh, I, f- I get an internship in Cleveland and Dallas. So that's where I'm at for the summer. He stays here in Orange County with the company. And I lasted like two and a half, three weeks. Um and I walked. I went home one one Tuesday night from work. Wrote my resignation letter, packed my stuff, and then Wednesday morning I was driving back from Texas, from Dallas, back to Orange County. And I just I was like, I'll never, I would never want to have a job again. Never want to work for someone again. I was telling Sergio that. Um, came back, came back to California, worked by myself for a couple of weeks, and then he qu- he was like, Yeah, I'm on the same wave as you, and I uh, quit, came back, and then summer, the rest of summer nineteen. We we lost out on on a good weeks a few good month of revenue probably uh-huh. from me leaving, but we still ended up doing like forty two forty three grand that year, or maybe it was closer to fifty. I gotta look. But uh, later in that year, the the Orange County president of EO reached out to me, which is the Entrepreneurs Organization. Uh huh. It's just a a group of a worldwide group of entrepreneurs and there's chapters in like every state and almost every country. And in order to be in it, you have to be 50% or more owner of a business that does a million dollars. They have the accelerator for, com- for owners who own uh, $250,000 in revenue and $999,000 in revenue. And then they have the, the GSEA, which is the global student entrepreneurship awards. And it's this giant speech worldwide speech competition for, uh, college students who own their own business. That's and, cool. And so, yeah, he reached out to me on LinkedIn, and then, and then what happened? So, you you got that from Keith, mm-hmm. and we entered into the the speech contest. We made our slide deck. Um, to this date, that's probably the best slide deck we've ever made, though. It was so clean. Yeah, it was very clean, and we show up for the competition, super nervous. Uh, it felt like we were giving a TED talk or something. Dude, I was I was a like top five, top three most nervous I've ever been in my life. Yeah, and I I think we killed it. We everybody, fucking, no, we yeah. fucking killed it. Yeah, right. everybody, everybody was cheering for us, and then we get second place. Do you know how many people um were there to present? It was like there was we were competing against three other companies. Okay. Yeah, so pretty small, but there was probably. 40 50 people in the state like in the audience yeah and there were some pretty cool interesting judges in the audience as well right yeah there was a judge yeah. who's actually our our friend now um who was on shark tank and got a deal with damon uh, there was there was judges who built and sold software companies for millions multi-millions i can see how that could be very nerve wracking for yeah, sure yeah. yeah so we uh we go through it we come in second place we're all bummed out like how did we not get first we lost to this company that was pre-revenue so they hadn't even made a dollar um and then the prize was like twenty two thousand dollars but then they kind of make an audible and they're like and they say that we can join in the accelerator even though we're not at two hundred fifty thousand so yeah. and we'll and we'll pay for your first year's membership. Yeah, which was way more valuable than $2,000 because at that time, one of our goals was to hit $200,000 in revenue in 2020, and we hit that. Yeah, so our, so the last slide we had on that deck in that speech was for the end of 2020, we want two trucks, two crews, 200 k in revenue, and the last point was join entrep- the Entrepreneurs Organization. <laughs> that was like our thing. And we were in EO because the business nice. was free. 2020 hit 200 205 k and had two trucks and two crews so manifestation baby yeah checking off boxes Those achieving goals your goals really sounded crazy at the time like they sounded unattainable i remember well, doing we're 4xing we're at 50, 
just under 50k we were more than 4x to get to 200 yeah i remember doing the spreadsheet and like calculating okay if we had two trucks and we were doing this and this it'd be 200k but how many windows would we have to clean to get to 200k it sounded crazy but so those goals were made for 2020 right yeah and we all know 2020 was a whole different year so 2020 was a freaking curveball for sure so for this is slow season for i know for window cleaners around um the first three months of the year January through march yeah okay so walk me through the whole entire 2020 how you guys what do you guys do to get to the achieving your goals okay so we do our, our planning like end of december early january we plan we're literally so pumped up like that's the most pumped up i've been in my life other than right now because i feel really pumped up at this point in my life too but <coughs> excuse me and and we're i'm i'm joining networking groups i'm going to chambers like chamber of commerce meetings just trying to f you know network with everybody get in with uh, property managers like builders so we can do their construction cleanups and it's working dude i'm i'm meeting a ton of people sergio's uh work into systems and stuff and covid hits right everyone knows covid, right. COVID hits in march, march. Mm -hmm. and we had like two weeks worth of work probably like we're two weeks out and we're like hell yeah things working we're gonna we're gonna hit 200k easy and uh you know like everyone's business pretty much shut down all work off the books and we're just kind of like i don't know how, how you felt sergio but it felt like someone punched me in the gut like someone snatched my soul i'd never felt more worse in my life than yeah. than that feeling i had during covid that was just i was scared and that's which is totally understandable yeah, yeah. I was, everyone, was. everyone was and then for the next month or two we both were just kind of in limbo and we would talk here and there but I mean, because we weren't, we weren't getting any work, and we weren't, we weren't sure if it was because of COVID. It was also raining a lot at the time, so mm -hmm. that's just the weather doesn't work good with our business. So we weren't sure what it was, but we just felt like our business was just crushed. Yeah, it was slow season plus COVID, and so it felt like no bouncing back. Mm -hmm, exactly. And that, that year, that summer. You're finishing up a semester at school as well, right, Sergio? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, coming from a from a family that doesn't have any types of entrepreneurship, I mean, my dad had he he was a self an o owner operator for trucking, so it's kind of like a business. But I've always been taught that business is risky, business is uncertain. So when this happened, I was like thinking well, this sucks. Like business, business is stupid. Like something like this can happen and then you just have no money. So that was kind of like, uh, it was a good opportunity for me to try civil engineering. That was your thought process? I mean, kind of, right? Yeah, like, that's the first time I'm ever hearing that, guys. Like, wow. I've, never, <laughs> I've never heard that. That's crazy. I mean, the business, it just, it just felt really discouraging. And it was at the same time that I was graduating, so it was a good opportunity to take a break and try civil engineering. So totally tried it out. So I tried it out, and I was, I mean, it at the time though I didn't know it was for a short amount of time, but I ended up staying there only two months, and I ended up coming back. I don't know if you want to kind of talk about that. So yeah, we we had been talking on the phone a lot while he was working his construct or his civil engineering job, and I and this so that little lull when he was at uh, working civil engineering, I uh, had a call with one of my mentors, and he told me basically you only quit once because I was thinking about quitting the business and just you know selling or doing whatever however we were gonna split it up. Right. He's like you only quit once, so really think hard. You know everybody's feeling how you're feeling. So I was like. Hey, that's that's kind of facts, and so I was just like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna just." Everyone's scared. Just turn on the gas, and we started getting jobs, like jobs, 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 slowly but surely. And then I hired one guy, hired another guy, another guy. Had like three guys working, so it was me and a team of three, four total. And this whole time, I'm talking to Sergio, and I can I can hear it. He's not liking his job. Right. And and. Finally, he's like, dude, like, 
let me let me come back and i was like i'm down like let's do it and uh at first i wanted to do some like vested equity <laughs> like to earn it back because i was like you left we left the business but i got over that real quick and and we're just 50 50 um right when he came back 50 50 and i just figured we started the business together and we like went through all the trial and error together like and he left for two months like whatever big fucking deal right but i mean at that time the business was pretty oh it was so unorganized so messy yeah. no systems like it was just i was running around with my my head cut off i was answering phone calls and in the field and doing in-person bids trying to i was literally booking people while driving on the freeway like sitting there like yeah what's your first and last name <laughs> email like looking down driving <laughs> so dangerous dude <clears throat> yeah, so and me c- me yeah. coming back was able to relieve that exactly from you because instead of having to do everything, you only had to do half mm-hmm. the things. And and it's always been like me doing the sales and then Sergio doing the operations. It's always kind of how it's been. So mm-hmm. you were missing the operation exactly. piece. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And uh, he came back and and we f- just wrecked 2020. Grew so so fast. We hit we hit all our goals, and that was without like two whole months of revenue zero revenue for two whole months and slow season that's not even including slow season so Mm -hmm. hit the 200k and then coming into 2021 you want to take over 2020 you guys also started adding a new service to oh yeah like i I touched on a little bit before we we did christmas lights that was hectic we made a lot of money though but uh, we also lost a lot on the bottom line because we didn't know how to manage inventory and like I said, running around with our freaking heads cut off, going to our suppliers' warehouses across the county and driving back across the county to drop that off. Then, like, it was just crazy. Yeah. And at that time, I think we hit a peak of seven people at the company, having an office admin and then six technicians, I think, right? Yeah. And me, I didn't have any management experience. Did did you? Not really, right? You didn't have much management experience before this? I had absolutely zero management okay. experience. Okay. <laughs> so you have two guys that know that don't know anything about management, managing this team and the culture was just so bad. People were not liking their jobs, people were arguing with each other. Talking Literally crap. crews were on sites arguing about who produces more per hour in terms of wow. what we're like that's how bad it was yeah it was re- it was very toxic they're like, they're like you don't even finish one crew was like you guys don't even finish on time you're getting off at six seven you guys work so slow they were getting pissed off because yeah so yeah, it was it was bad horrible way to run a company but we we got through it but then coming into the slow season the work drops off so then some people like we we just have to let go of a lot of our crew yeah or put them on unemployment but like a lot of these old school guys they don't like they want to work so yeah you know, they're gonna go other places that aren't seasonal yeah so we ended up dropping down to three people i think two or three people four it was four it was, it was me you or oh, including us yeah. yeah me you uh one technician and, and our admin yeah that was it so basically lost everybody wow. lost everybody so it kind of feels like we're back to square one then we're ramping up for the busy season and we're still low on manpower and it's just like a constant uphill battle trying to get guys to fulfill all the work that we have. This whole time though we set up this whole te- like software stack on the back end, our CRM integrating with like online booking, with our review management, with uh, what else do we have on there? That's it, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah and and our our marketing engine is just going nuts. Like we're just getting so many leads, it's insane. Yeah, so the leads part is what we had down. The fulfilling the jobs part we didn't. So Right. Again, always always running around with their heads cut off. At this point you guys have one truck or two? No, we two have two trucks. Two yeah. two now? Okay. So yeah. So yeah, coming into busy season, uh, we we still grew month over month over our last year. So, like we had to like March is really usually pretty slow for us still, but we did twenty k in th- this March, which was more than double over the years before. Mm-hmm. <coughs> and then 
we we just kept hiring. I mean, we we would put some pretty bad teams out to be honest, guys that we probably shouldn't have hired, but we were desperate um, to to get this work done. But I mean, we got it done. You know, forty k month after forty k month. As soon as we added that third truck, boosted that up to seventy k, and and we have it down to a point now where I I know how much money we're going to spend on advertising for the month and I know how much it's going to return us. So it's now it's just a matter of fulfilling labor or fulfilling demand. Like I told Sergio the other day, we could have a million dollar company right now if we can figure out the labor part and scaling the labor part quickly. Yeah. Right. And I really hate making excuses. We like we hate making excuses. We like to take ownership. You know, like if something's not working, you you should be doing something about it to fix it. Mm -hmm. But it really was a tough labor market that we've been navigating through this year because of unemployment and, and everyone's having the same issues. So we it's just so much trial and error, so many bad hires and then firing. And some crazy stories, though. Crazy to, to stories. To laugh at, that's for sure. Yeah, they weren't funny in the moment, but <laughs> you look back and, yeah, it doesn't even sound real. But, but yeah, I mean that brings us to like right now, we're uh, 500k is a lock this year. We're, we're more than doubled again, doubled every year at least. I think we'll hit 700. If we don't do Christmas lights, it'll probably be around six. Okay, yeah, that's not a lot of business can just double every year. That's insane. Yeah, man, freaking. As long as you stick with something, like me and Sergio have always said, uh, you only fail if you quit. So as long as you don't quit, you're you're yeah. going gonna to grow something. Yeah. And just throughout the whole business journey, we've made so many pivots. Just pivot, pivot, pivot instead of quitting, right? Mm -hmm. And now recently, we made a pivot to adjust to the current labor market and just went completely subcontractor model. So it's that's super rare to in the window to preface, cleaning yeah, To preface industry. that, we... We did a hybrid where we were running three trucks W-2 and one truck uh, sub. The sub was able to produce way more, and the margin was higher. Compared to, compared to compared your W-2s to W2 employees? Yeah. 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 And obviously, the, the W-2 trucks, that's a reflection of our training systems and our management. But still, you're putting when you, when you put a sub out to do the work, you're putting out another business owner uh -huh. who also cares about his work and his name and what he does. And if he owns the business, he probably moves fast and knows how to clean windows really well. That's true. So uh, that worked, made us a ton of money in, in August. And so we were like, screw it. We uh, converted some guys to W-2, sold them the trucks and the equipment. No, to sub. The W-2s yeah. to subs and then sold them the trucks and equipment. And uh, with subs, it's going to be a lot easier to scale. And it, it's really a, just a benefit to our what we're good at, which is the marketing and the sales. So we can pump up and scale really quickly just by adding more subs. You guys are also good at operational wise as far as getting the jobs and sending out guys to the jobs as well. Yeah, I mean that's just software. Software makes it really easy. Okay. Automating yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that brings us to now. Um let's talk about what we're what we're doing now. So we've got this podcast and we also started another business. The business, well, the podcast, uh, you do what for a living? It's think like impulsive, but for business. So every think about every podcast you hear on, you know, Apple or any podcast you listen to. It's so serious, like interview style, you know, whereas this is going to be more conversation based and more storytelling, you know, like funny stories in business and just going to be super casual. Um, it's talking shop. You know, yeah. But with the high quality video. Um, on the, I guess, how do I put it? Like high, just high quality video. So yeah, we're going to be focusing on production. Make sure your quality that you're looking at on every single camera here is great. Sounds, make sure, let us know. Um, this is our first time recording it on this new uh, system, so let us know if it sounds great as well or not. And I'll guess it's going to be from all kinds of different walk of life, all different industry. And the point is, from the name of the podcast is that you do what for a living so everyone will do different things to make money and we want to hear their stories exactly and another thing me and Sergio being an EO for a couple of years now 
we know so many entrepreneurs and like we're gonna post this on twitter i got i have a, I have a small twitter following uh you know like two twenty two hundred 2200 followers and nothing crazy but there's nobody putting out high quality content on twitter like high quality s- video snippets on twitter right and i want to bring our network and the people we know that don't have twitter accounts and kind of reveal their businesses and how they operate to um to the small business community on twitter yes there's just so many cool businesses cool business owners that are not on the platform that are not not talking about their businesses like Mm -hmm. in the threads that you see on twitter and we also listen we all listen to business podcasts but this is something that we haven't found out there that we would totally listen to all the time so absolutely and in some way we're actually enabling different businesses that are not known to other people so this kind of opened up more awareness to different businesses that people are not aware of that are making money so people can maybe learn more about it themselves also i was gonna there was another point i was gonna make just had a brain fart or what that did um yeah i don't know where you're going with that but it's gonna be dope it's gonna be sick drop us drop a sub Drop a like, my other follow. P- my other points I didn't remember is that, so now we're going to be posting this. So if you have an, any interesting business, um, if you find this from Twitter or YouTube, feel free to reach out to us and we'll definitely consider it putting, uh, featuring you guys on this it's podcast. It's in person only though. So you have to be willing to come to California or be in California. Obviously it's easier to be in California. So if you're in California and have a cool business, come jump on the pod. We'd love to talk to you. And let's talk about, tell them about our third business, or our third business, our other business that we're just yeah. off the ground. So what was really cool about building Orange Window Cleaning was we learned so, m- so much about business, marketing, and Yelp. Yelp was a very crucial part to our story. And we learned how to optimize Yelp and how to basically turn our small business that was doing maybe five to ten thousand dollars a month to doing over forty thousand dollars a month by just advertising on Yelp so that was something that we learned that so many other home service businesses could be doing but they're not just because the they stigma. don't know yeah the stigma of of Yelp's bad Yelp's the bad guy don't don't advertise yeah so with that expertise and knowledge that we have in home service specifically on the Yelp ad platform we're we started an agency, the Tuffy Agency, and we're mis- our mission is basically to help other home services grow their business on the back of Yelp. So yeah, and we think if you're in if you're in California, you're not advertising Yelp, and you're a home service own business owner, uh, you need to immediately because if you're like I said, if you're in California, it is literally better than Google. It's bottom of the funnel advertising, so you know if someone's coming to Yelp, they're looking to buy. Mm-hmm. that's definitely a w- for sure because in california people use yelp a lot for different things so yep. people need to get their business on yelp and advertising for sure yeah and for y- those of you that don't know home service is by far their largest category and their largest percent of revenue when it comes to advertisement by a long shot yeah and the way that i the way that i think about it is we literally have a lottery ticket because the fact that you could put in two thousand dollars to add spend and get forty thousand dollars out guaranteed that just sounds like if you told anybody that they'd think you're crazy and they would they would tell tell you sign me up right now sign me up like yesterday so it's just th- it's just the fact that people don't know about it but it's there's opportunity out there and it's it's ripe for the picking so yeah so that's our that's the new thing we're focusing on but uh Next year, Orange Window Cleaning will be at a million dollars. Mark my words. So that's the goal for 2022? Yeah, well, we're doubling yeah. every year. So we nice. should be at a million next year as long as the trend keeps going that way. Awesome. But, I mean, yeah, I think that's it. Anything else? This is it. This is marking our f- uh, first episode for You Do What for a Living. And this is a story for Orange Window Cleaning. Um, keep an eye out for our next episode. Drop a like, follow, subscribe. Uh, Sergio Seleski on Instagram, uh, ASAP Surge on Twitter. You need a new handle for sure. Yep. <laughs> uh, follow me on Twitter, Squeegee God, Johnny Robinson underscore underscore on Instagram. I should be at Mintai17 on 
Twitter, Instagram. How do you spell that? M I N H T H A I seventeen. Yeah. On Instagram and, then, and Twitter. Uh, I'm not sure what the socials are for this yet because we haven't even made them. So, uh, like we we'll definitely said, include a link uh, down in the description link for sure. Link in the description. Yep. Yeah, but this is serious. This is real business, <laughs> and you guys better stick around because this is gonna be some nobody, fire content. Nobody's bringing you content like this in 2021. All right. Absolutely right. All right. So we're out. Later.